Enjoy a narrated virtual tour of trainers exhibited at the National Museum of Naval Aviation. Some of the photos and videos on this tour are of the same model aircraft but were captured at other museums. It is free to visit and located on Naval Air Station Pensacola in Florida. The Curtis A-1 Triad was the aircraft in which the Navy's first aviators learned to fly. It was the platform for early experiments, including making the first night water landing without the benefit of landing lights, tests in airborne wireless communication, and a cross-country flight covering 112 miles in 122 minutes. Its nickname was derived from the fact that in addition to flying, its pontoon float and retractable landing gear allowed it to operate from both land and water. This is a replica that was constructed to celebrate Naval Aviation's golden anniversary in 1961. Curtis's JN series aircraft achieved widespread fame due to the sheer numbers in which they were produced. Known universally as the Jenny, the aircraft served primarily as a trainer, and it is estimated that over 95% of all American and Canadian World War I pilots received some instruction in the aircraft. The N-9 seaplane version was the Navy's primary training aircraft from 1917 through the mid-1920s. Following World War I, Jennies participated in experimental flights for the Army and Navy, evaluating the feasibility of operating aircraft from airships. However, it was in the hands of barnstormers and pilots of the fledgling airmail service that the aircraft became most famous, exposing thousands of Americans to aviation. The Thomas Morse S-5 seaplane, known to a generation of pilots as the Tommy, was used as a primary trainer in limited numbers by the Navy during the Great War. They flew mainly from Dinner Key near Miami, and water had to be emptied from their ungainly wooden floats after each flight. Though the trusty Tommy disappeared from military airfields in the years following World War I, it remained in the public eye on the big screen, flying combat sequences in such Hollywood war movies as Hell's Angels and Dawn Patrol. The Curtis N-2C fledglings spent most of their service lives as primary trainers assigned to Naval Reserve training bases throughout the country. The pilot and instructor sat in tandem open cockpits, and the fixed tail skid undercarriage could be easily swapped for a large central pontoon and outrigger floats under the wings for seaplane training. Six specially equipped consolidated Model 14 Husky Juniors two-seat trainers were purchased by the Navy in 1930 and assigned to the rigid airships Los Angeles and Akron as N2Ys. Rigged with skyhooks, the trainers were used to familiarize pilots with in-flight launching and recovery from the huge airship's trapeze gear, preparing them for flying from rigid airship aircraft carriers. After training in the Husky Juniors, Fixed-wing pilots assigned to duty with the airships flew the small Curtis F-9C fighter from the airship's large hangars. Rapid advances in shipboard operations, vulnerability in weather, and questionable survivability of the airship in war, resulted in the airships being dropped in favor of more promising opportunities. In 1930, the Navy purchased six new standard aircraft companies D-29 trainers after they had been configured to Navy specifications, designating them NT-1. Originally configured with a single cockpit, with student and instructor in tandem, high drag and pilot discomfort dictated reconfiguration to the more common two-cockpit arrangement. They served for a comparatively short time with the last NT-1 retiring in 1937. Between 1940 and 1941, the number of aviators trained by the Navy increased from 708 to 3,112, launching a wartime expansion that would produce nearly 65,000 pilots by the end of 1945. The commercial Ryan ST-3 was one of the aircraft chosen by the Navy to meet the increased training demands, designating them NR-1 recruits. Up to that time, most military trainers were biplanes, while the recruit was a monoplane with a top speed of 115 miles per hour. One of the most produced biplanes in history, the Stearman N2SK Det served as the nation's foremost primary trainer during World War II. Though nicknamed the K Det, the airplane was more commonly called the Stearman after its manufacturer. Former President George H.W. Bush made two flights in this particular aircraft during his World War II flight training. By the beginning of World War II, 
both the Army and Navy operated standardized versions of the K-DET with interchangeable parts, unique in an era when joint operations were far from standard. This airplane finished the war with 2,860 flight hours. Called Yellow Peril because of its color scheme and principle used by inexperienced flight students, the Naval Aircraft Factory's N3N primary trainer was extremely rugged and easy to maintain. Acquired in much smaller numbers than the N2S, it saw service as a primary trainer from the late 30s to the mid 40s, configured as both wheeled and float planes. It was reliable and embodied the ruggedness that had been demanded of it, both characteristics that earned the respect of the thousands of naval aviators who received their first taste of flying in the N3N. Where it became perilous was in taxiing. Poor visibility from the cockpit combined with inadequate brakes and an ineffective rudder led to more than a few ground loops. Float-configured N3Ns were later used for midshipman indoctrination flights at the U.S. Naval Academy until their retirement in 1961, the last biplane ever used in military service. An exceptionally well-conceived and well-built Navy trainer, the North American SNJ Texan entered service before World War II and served into the 1950s. It was the first trainer with all-metal construction and with retractable landing gear. Two generations of naval aviators trained in them, and many aviators made their first carrier landings in the aircraft. It transitioned pilots from biplanes to monoplanes and they were also employed as gunnery and instrument trainers. An SNJ played an important role in the development of the modern aircraft carrier when it tested day and night touch-and-go and arrested landings and takeoffs in winds of varying force and direction on the Navy's first angled deck aircraft carrier, Antietam. With a service life that spanned multiple years, the Beach SNB was known by a variety of designations and nicknames, including Navigator, Expediter, and Kansan. In 1962, with the decision to standardize all military aircraft designations, all SNB-JRB aircraft were redesignated C-45s, with the SNB becoming RC-45. It was ordered in 1940 for use as an aerial photography platform, eventually serving in a variety of other roles, from administrative and logistic support to training. It carried everything from cameras to sophisticated radar and jamming equipment in training aerial photographers and naval flight officers. Many naval aviators not assigned to an operational squadron relied on the Bug Smasher, as it was affectionately called, to maintain flying proficiency. The Vaulty SNV Valiant was used as an intermediate trainer for naval aviators during World War II. It introduced students to a more powerful engine, incorporated two-way radio communications, manually operated flaps, and a variable pitch, two-blade propeller, all major steps that prepared student pilots for advancing to more complicated, higher-performance aircraft. In addition, it was used extensively as instrument trainers where the cockpits featured hoods that blocked the student's reference to the outside world, forcing him to ignore his senses and fly based on what the needles and dials told him. The last Valiants appeared in the Navy inventory in 1946, but they had been withdrawn from Navy service in great numbers before that time. In 1940, the Navy ordered Curtis Wright CW-22Ns, designated SNC Falcon, to help to meet the war-driven need for aviator training and transitioning from biplanes to monoplanes. It was conceptually like the SNJ, which preceded it into the Navy training inventory, but had a less powerful engine among other differences. It was an all-metal low-wing monoplane derived from a light fighter design and operated as a scout trainer. Tim Aircraft introduced a two-seat primary training monoplane built entirely of aeromold, a plastic bonded plywood. This construction material was attractive to the military due to the high demand for aluminum in combat aircraft. They ordered them for use in formation flying training, designating them N2T1. They saw limited service, being declared surplus in late 1944. North American's T-28 Trojan was introduced in the 1950s and served into the 80s in the Naval Air Training Command. It had the look, feel, sound, and power of early World War II fighters, something the Navy desired when it entered training service in the mid-century. Powerful but predictable, the aircraft was an ideal trainer, although it was not pressurized and lacked ejection seats. 
students found the Trojans sturdy and roomy, with great visibility, responsive and docile, and fully aerobatic. It could be safely spun from relatively low altitudes and counted on for a nearly instantaneous recovery. North American's TV-2 shooting stars trained the Navy's first generation of jet pilots and supported missile testing as control aircraft and target drones. Though successful as a land-based trainer, the TV-2 was not satisfactory for carrier operations. They remained in service into the 1980s as utility aircraft and proficiency trainers. During World War II the U.S. Navy and Army Air Forces operated common training aircraft, and the practice continued into the 1950s when the Navy and the recently created U.S. Air Force both chose the Beach Model 45 as a primary trainer. This early version of the T-34 Mentor became operational during the 1950s and was used by the Navy for over 20 years. In April 1975 the Navy ordered an improved version of the aircraft that featured a 400-horsepower turboprop. In 2002 the Navy began a gradual withdrawal of the Mentor, replacing it with the T-6A Texan II, a joint primary trainer for use by both the Navy and Air Force. Grumman's TC-4 Academe, introduced in 1967, trained bombardiers, navigators and pilots for operations in the A-6 Intruder. Academes included an intruder nose ray dome, a simulated intruder cockpit and four consoles for intruder crew training. Four simulated bombing missions were flown at one time, saving wear and tear on the intruders. The Northrop T-38 Talon is a twin-engine supersonic jet trainer used by the Navy for its Naval Test Pilot School. They act as opposing aircraft in military war games, using enemy tactics, techniques and procedures to give a realistic simulation of air combat. The North American T-2 Buckeye trainer drew from proven, existing technologies, its wings derived from the FJ-1 Fury and its control system in line with that of the propeller-driven T-28 Trojan training aircraft. Being a multi-purpose trainer, the Buckeye incorporated under-wing hardpoints for weapons training and arresting gear for carrier qualification. The Buckeye's final carrier qualification flights occurred in 2003. Douglas's TA-4J started as a training version for the A-4 Skyhawk. They were such good trainers that the Navy adopted them for all their advanced jet fighter and attack pilot training. I hope you enjoyed this narrated virtual tour of the National Naval Aviation Museum's trainers. If you would like to tour other aircraft in this series, you will find convenient links in the description section below this video. Here are YouTube suggested links on a similar topic that you may enjoy viewing.